Everyone wants the film look, the film grain, the halation, the texture. Everything just makes your footage feel alive. But the truth is, unless you're actually shooting on film, you're not really getting the film look. You're faking it. And most of us try to fake it with expensive plugins, me included, until it starts feeling more like a money pit than a vibe. But here's the thing. I actually think you can recreate the vibe manually with an intrusor. And it doesn't have to be complicated. At least, that's what I think. Before we dive into any nodes or grain overlays, this is what we're going after. The classic 16mm film has a chunky grain, not subtle noise, but actual texture. The color is often low saturation with a slight magenta cast and warmer shadows. Obviously, this depends on the film stock you're using, but the most common ones will give you that look. You get that dreamy highlight bloom, a glow that isn't sharp, and no, your mist filter won't recreate exactly that. But most of all, it feels imperfect. There's jitter, flicker, black edges, and that's the magic, imperfection. I just wanna make a quick note, this is a bit awkward, but I have a mic up here, but I forgot my audio recorder, so today we're going off a love mic. Just so I'll mention that before anyone does in the comments. All right, let's set this up. First thing first, start clean. As you can see here in DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna open my effects so you can see better. We got the clip and it's not color graded, it's raw. Now, the first thing first, you wanna make sure the clip is properly color managed, which means you have to create a color space transport or a CST sandwich. I'm not gonna explain why in this video, but this is one of my favorite ways to color grade and to adapt color space, especially for log footage. So we're gonna drag and drop a color space transfer on the first one and on the last one. The first one will be Sony S Gamma 3 Cine and S Log 3 because this is what I shot on. And we're gonna go into DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate because this is what you want to edit in. The last one goes from DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 because this is what you want to export in. So the first thing you want to do is create a next node and let's call it primaries. Here, what you want to do is go down here in the primary color wheels and you want to bring up the lift a little bit, just slightly. Then we're going to crush the gamma a little bit more to create a bit of a moodier tone. And then on the offset, we're going to take this little slider and move it slightly towards magenta. Again, not that much, but just enough that you have that little bit of magenta over here. Now, one last thing, let's bring down saturation a little bit to 45. Usually that does it. I like to start this way with primaries because I just feel like this way you can create a less digital look right away. And then we're gonna move on to add a bit more contrast later, add some grain, have elation, glow, all the stuff later. But as a start, you have to nail these little steps because I feel like this really helps to create the overall look. I also wanna mention that if you do shoot with cine lenses or vintage lenses in general, this will help so much bring in the look because this glass is a lot less sharp and right off the batch you're not going to have that you know digital clinical look that comes out of these cameras nowadays but a, something a bit more soft which is more similar to 16 millimeter film now if this feels like too much tweaking or if you're on a deadline things can get very tricky Luckily, you can now find easy drag and drop plugins that can get you the same 16 millimeter film look on motion array they got grain packs, glow effects, light leaks, film burns, you name it. If you don't want to spend 20 minutes keyframing in uh, Flickr or something, well, there's a plugin for that. And honestly, this is a sponsored ad, but even before that, I always use the service, I think for the last seven years. They just add so much value and speed up my workflow that it's just worth it. So click the link down in the description and get two months free with any yearly subscription. If you're unsure, they even give you a seven day free trial. So I don't know what else you want. Now let's get back to the video. 
Now talking about the look, this is what the actual film stock recreates. Depending on the film stock that you're picking, you're gonna get a different look. For example, the 500T, which I'm chasing today, is a tungsten film, which means it usually has got warmer shadows and cooler highlights to balance off those tungsten lights. Now, there is so many different film stocks, especially when it comes to photography. So it's very hard to exactly recreate it, but what you can do is trying to understand what film look you're chasing, for example, warmer shadows and cooler highlights, and then try to recreate that within the Vinci Resolve. So let's try. Now, once you got your look node, you can do this a few different ways, but the way I like to do it is working with lift, gamma, and gain, again, with the primaries color wheels. And here we're gonna play around with the three colors at the bottom. I find this to be the more quick and precise in my opinion. So here we go. We're gonna warm up our shadows a little bit bring down those blues here we go now our shadows are nice and warm and then we're going to go into gain and we're going to bring down the highlights a little bit the reds here we go that looks good usually i like to lift also the gamma a little bit just a tiny bit so just like this that's before that's after you see it creates this nice beautiful warm glow now we're going to go back to primaries quickly and add a little bit of contrast because i do feel like some contrast is a little bit missing in this image. Okay, now we're gonna try and build that beautiful glow that 60 millimeter creates whenever it reacts to light. In this specific shot, I picked this shot because it's so backlit and I feel like it's gonna just recreate perfectly exactly the look that we're going for. So let's add one more node and call it glow. And then we're gonna go into our library and look for glow. So. Once you add it, you can see it actually looks pretty good right off the batch. But we do want to check a few things. You do want to make sure the composite is on add because usually that's what looks best. And then you also want to make sure that the spread is to the right amount. So you see, like if you play around with the spread, pretty much what it does, instead of making highlights clip, you get this beautiful glow. So we're going to play around with that, but also with the threshold because you see the threshold is what actually makes this effect react to light. So you want to have this a little bit lower than what it usually comes with because again, we're chasing imperfection. We're not chasing a beautiful, perfect image because this is not what 16 millimeter is. Now, obviously you can't make a 16 millimeter film look without talking about grain. And uh, unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve doesn't allow you to get the grain effect unless you got the studio version, but we're doing everything for free today. So what you can do is either download a free grain overlay, get one from Motion Ray because they have plenty. So once you drag it and drop it on top, you want to change the composite to overlay. And now when we zoom in, that's with, without, with, without. So as you can see, it adds not only just grain, but also a bit of texture to your image. Now, one thing that not many people actually do, it's going into the actual color grading of the grain, and then we're gonna add a bit of warmth to the shadow. Let's see, that's without, that's with, and then a bit of coolness to the highlights. It adds another level of color and texture, which honestly, I find very interesting. Now, our footage starts to look pretty damn good, to be honest, if we look at the before and the after, we're almost, almost there. We're missing one main thing, which is halation. And unfortunately, again, same as grain, DaVinci Resolve Studio does offer a beautiful halation plugin, but the free version not, and we're doing things for free. So we have to work around this one. So let's create a new node. And uh, this is how you can make halation kind of work for free. Okay, so right click on your node. You wanna go into composite mode and click on screen. Now, we're gonna go and look for edges. Edge detect, that's what you want. And right off the bat, it looks absolutely horrible. Deactivate the edges. And you see what the edges of the image that this is detecting. So what you wanna do is try and remove these edges so that it looks a bit more halation-like. So halation usually only applies to where the light is. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, change to grayscale and then you can uh, adjust the width of halation and also bring up the gamma. 
And then what you can do is like, we know Alation comes from here. So we can make a mask that looks good to me. And now we're ready to go into composite mode and screen. So what you have to do now, it's simply go into edge color and change it to the halation color, which is usually reddish. And so once we got that, you can now go into the edge width and you can kind of find the right balance for it. As you can see, the more you play around with these tools, you, the more you actually figure out how to use them. You can play around with some blur, but usually I leave the blur quite low. And to me, that looks actually pretty good. You can even move the mask around. But as you can see, this is before, let's call this halation. This is before halation and this is after. And obviously, again, depends on the situation. Some 16 millimeter film, they would react almost too much to this, to like something like this. Like I have photos that I shot on my camera on my photography film camera and literally I have this kind of halation. So you just have to decide what kind of vibe you want to go for. So there you have it. That's how you make a 16 millimeter film look within the Mint Resolve for free, no subscription, no paying, nothing. You can download the Mint Resolve and get this look right now, right here. With that said, if you do want to step up your color grading and just get this film look a lot easier and with one click, then definitely check out Motion Array, which was kind enough to sponsor this video. I hope I'm going to remember my audio recorder next time I shoot a video, so I don't have to wear this, but I can record with this mic up here. With that said, thanks so much guys for sticking around until here. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video next week. See ya.